Hi guys, Matt here. Today I want to talk about an application called Voodoo Shield. Um, instead of a typical antivirus where it uses a blacklist to you know, find malicious files or viruses, malware, all that stuff, um, Voodoo Shield simply says, okay, we have a, a uh, database of you know, hundreds of thousands of whitelisted uh, good files that we know about. Okay, those files can run. Those files can install. Now, files that we haven't seen before, files that do not have what they call a digital signature, are looked at very suspicious and usually are not allowed to run. Now, for these files that do not have a dig digital signature, or they're just kind of unknown, Voodoo Shield will go ahead and upload that particular file, that, that file that we just don't know about, um, and have it scanned by 57 different virus antivirus engines. So it's it's something that um, uh, you, you usually don't uh, work with too much these days, but it's going to be pretty much the future. Uh, so let's go through what they say. A few things on their site before we get started. So the concept. If your computer is running a web app, it needs to be locked, period. Not a filter, not a sandbox, not virtualization, an absolute lock. So here's kind of what I said, but they say it much better. So it's a simple approach. Traditional blacklist antivirus software can no longer keep up with 200,000 plus new viruses and malware created daily. So Voodoo Shield locks your computer, blocks all new, non-whitelisted executable, co executable code, I don't know why I couldn't say that, uh, including viruses and malware. While your computer is running uh, a web app, like a browser, email, etc., traditional antivirus is great, but your computer should be locked when it is at risk. The cool thing is they offer a free version that's really effective. The uh, pro version you can see here, $19.99 a year per computer, offers a lot more stuff. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the free version today, version 3.45. We'll download it, keep it. 13.3 megabytes and it's nice they don't ask for an email or anything like that so just no nonsense here's your download so um, I did today download some malware off my spam filter at work uh, I've got six of them but I'll probably only be able to test like four but you'll see how it works so let's go ahead and install Voodoo Shield. And I'm going to put this, uh, no, we'll leave it like that for now. <clears throat> That's how fast it installs. And we'll go ahead and run it. All right, so they give you a really clear explanation of how Voodoo Shield's gonna start. So autopilot mode, choose this mode if you would like Voodoo Shield to make the most, uh, most of the decisions on what items to allow and block automatically. This mode is not quite as secure as application whitelisting mode, but there will be less user prompts and it's more user friendly. Application whitelisting mode, uh, choose this mode if you would like to make the most uh, most decisions of what to allow and to block. This is slightly more secure. So this is slightly more secure than autopilot mode, but there will be more prompts and therefore not quite as user friendly. We'll take more prompts right now. That's right. Then they come up with another set of ex ex uh, explanations on uh, uh, how to actually run this. So this is the first time you're running Voodoo Shield on this computer. So it probably took a few seconds to take a white uh, take a whitelist snapshot of your system and save settings. Voodoo Shield now knows most of the software in your system that should be allowed when, you're, uh, when your computer is at risk. Uh, once Voodoo Shield is active, Voodoo Shield will only allow software that is in your whitelist snapshot unless you choose to allow additional software. So unlike traditional antivirus software that tries to block all the bad stuff, we do the opposite and simply allow the good stuff that we know about already essentially. Voodoo Shield will start initially in smart mode, which will toggle on and off depending on if a web app is running or not. 
You can right click on Voodoo Shield desktop uh, shield uh, gadget at the bottom to change your settings. So, and then they give you some more explanations, but I'm tired of reading. You can read that. Pause it. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go ahead and close that. Right now it's on because uh, it's on because I have Google Chrome running right now. If I close this, it shuts off. So we're not really protected um, by that uh, default setting. Uh, so if I, I'll show you what happens. If, if you're not running a web application, and let's say you copy a file like off a USB stick or something like that, let's, let's test that. Let's just copy over a virus. And what we can do, I like I like this about Voodoo Shield. They offer a right click, uh, a right click scan. So right click Voodoo Shield scan, and right away it comes up saying, okay, twelve out of fifty six different engines detected this is bad. And it also says this file is not digitally signed. Bad. Okay, so you can close this for a second. If I want to open this, well, it's already gone. So it already detected it as bad and poof, toast. Um, so let's go ahead and pull over. I don't think this is going to show up. I don't have a doc reader on here. And then let's pull over another few zip files. All right. Let's minimize that now. Okay. Uh, let me try to scan this. Now, there is no reader for it. Okay, so only executable files can be uploaded for blacklist scanning or sandboxing. All right, well, we'll ignore that for now. Or they will ignore that. I'll try to open this guy up, and this is get some kind of JavaScript file. It says invoice. As soon as I copy to my desktop, let's try to run it. Voodoo Shield, even though it says off, Voodoo Shield has blocked a threat. 25 out of 55 engines detected this. Please click here to uh, suspend auto quarantine or click the X to block the file uh, without auto quarantine. Please click here to, for details to suspend. Uh, no, so, it's, so it's gone. So it went to the quarantine. Then I can go ahead and just, uh, I think it was that one, scan it. Same thing, 17 out of 56. This is not, you know, not a digitally signed file, blah, blah, blah. You can go ahead and block it or quarantine it. I just quarantine it. So it's gone. Same here. Windows cannot complete this extraction because it's toast. Fall about a 56. That's so pretty awesome. I mean, it's scanning so fast against so many different engines. And then uh, besides that, it says this file is not digitally signed. So any file that is not digitally signed is not worth, you know, dealing with. You, you just don't want, you just don't want it. Unless it's something you created or something you know someone created. All right. Same thing there. If we open that back up, nothing I can do with that. Let's try to let's try to extract that. It allows me to extract it, which is weird. It should just block it, and then um, gets rid of it right there. And then we can just scan this guy and just go ahead and quarantine it. All right. Um, so let's take a look at some of the settings. I'll probably have to do a few different, well, at least another video on this thing. It's kind of huge, maybe on the pro version. Uh, if you try to go to the settings, it says you're currently running the free version. Uh, so most of the settings are disabled. Would you like to purchase? No. So yeah, most of the settings are indeed disabled. The free version's pretty limited in what you can actually do with it when you want to change something. As you can see, almost everything's just kind of, you know, grayed out. Now, um, 
yeah, so these files are right here. The files in red. Um, damn, I th thought I knew this one. Let's see. I'm pretty sure red meant something. I know they're all whitelisted. These are the files that are running, I guess, right now. Yeah, and you can search for uh, a file. Like, I can probably search for regedit. No. Guess not. I, I haven't messed with that too much. I guess these are the files that he's encountered so far. And I wish it said if they were whitelisted or not. Whitelist editor. No, I'm not going to delete any of that stuff. I don't know why it would allow me to. Hmm, I thought for sure I saw that somewhere. Uh, user log, uh, all the stuff that I've blocked or quarantined and some of the stuff that it's allowed. You know, obviously whitelisted stuff like explored, IDXE, DLL, host IDXE. Stuff that's already got digital signatures and it knows about. So quarantine, I can restore something if it's a you know false positive. Register your license. Uh, that's about it. If I um, open up a web app, anything you can see this just turned on right now. So anything that I download, like let's try to download. Hmm, let's go look for iTunes on Yahoo. Yahoo just does a terrible job at uh, allowing any ads. So let's do a search for uh, iTunes download. If we go down a little bit. So we see Apple driver download, driver support. Oh boy, I just did this earlier today. Maybe I just did iTunes. There was a ton of ads that had fake iTunes, you know, download links. So we'll try to download this and see what happens. Well, this is interesting. It wants to add some extension. <laughs> the extension seems to get added okay to Chrome. Hmm. I don't know. It's kind of weird. Another extension. Another extension. <laughs> These are all crap extensions. My browser is getting totally changed. So this is actually kind of a good test. I would expect Voodoo Shield to kind of block that. If I close this browser and this thing, all right, so let's close this. Hopefully this should go away once I reopen. No, it doesn't. That sucks. Okay, Voodoo Shield, uh, block some extensions in Chrome next time. It's, that's kind of odd. They may be signed, but they are they should be going through a check, so some sort of check. Um, kind <laughs> of just... Sort of put a damper on that demo. Crap. I wasn't expecting that. I like the app, but... I guess I should have run this in, like, sandbox mode or something. Hmm. Is there a sandbox mode? Not that I really see. Smart, always on. It's always on. And okay, same damn thing. All right, so I, I, mean, I definitely have to do another video with this. Hopefully, somebody from Voodoo Shield will get back to me and say, "I just figured since this is running in their you know little app mode thing that it would detect it." 
Uh, some of these add-ons or some of these extensions are just sheer shit. Okay, well, you can see what it does whenever you drag over files. Um, let's try to go to like uh, something like uh, malcode. Type around my damn mic. This is going to a stupid ask. Malcode. Malcode database, that's what I'm looking for. All right, uh, let's try to load one of these files or one of these URLs. Advanced PC care. We'll just say run anyway. And Voodoo Shield blocks that with a 50 out of 57. So if it's blocking downloads and stuff, um, I would highly advise them to block things uh, like extensions uh, for browsers. Um, that's my only uh, gripe about this app. Otherwise, it's awesome. I wouldn't mind paying 20 bucks a year to block things that are accident accidentally downloaded that don't have a di digital signature, but... Again, I don't want someone like my daughter to come down here and start loading a, um, a crap ton of extensions, even though they're super easy to get rid of. Uh, you know, just do something about that. I'm not going to harp on it forever. <clears throat> uh, this is interesting. So it's a .jpg. Let's see what it does with this. Uh, I'm not going to open that because I'm, <laughs> I'm afraid of what it'll be. I don't feel like editing. Uh, da, da, da. Do another exe. Uh, okay, it's already well known that it's bad. That's a problem with using like malcode. All this stuff is well known. Let's try to go for like a really new one here. Okay, more run anyway. Okay, Malcode blocks it with an 11 out of 56. So anyway, uh, that's it for this little test of Voodoo Shield. I'm sure uh, I'll be doing some more with Voodoo Shield. And uh, I hope they get back to me and say, you know, something on why these uh, extensions were loaded. I was hoping it would block those from being loaded or at least scan them or something. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know I rambled on a lot. Um, if you want to see something in the future, let me know in a comment. Uh, if you like the video, please like, comment, subscribe, and share. I know this was a, kind of a long one, but it's a neat application, uh, and I think it deserves a, uh, a, a good look by you guys. So talk to you later.